So you finally finished setting up your hardware wallet, but now you're prompted to choose between a SegWit or a native SegWit address. Confused? Don't worry, we all were. Let's remove the mystery and level up together. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, we'll be taking a look at a question from one of our community members. We'll look at the difference between legacy, SegWit, and native SegWit addresses for Bitcoin. What's the difference between them? What are the benefits of each? And which one should you use? Let's jump in. So today's topic comes from a great question that was asked in response to our video, setting up a Ledger Nano X from scratch. We can see here a common confusion asking, well, why do I have to choose between SegWit and native SegWit? Is one better than the other? What happens if I send from an exchange from one address type to my wallet with another address type? Am I at risk of losing my funds? Really good question. Now I know we are primarily a Cardano channel, but if we're all being honest, most of us that found our way to Cardano first found Bitcoin. It's a pretty common question, so we figured others would have the same confusion. Here we are on Ledger Live, and we see this is the account corresponding to our test wallet that we'd set up a while back. We have two different address types, SegWit and native SegWit. So let's try and demystify this a little bit. There's a great article provided by Ledger themselves on the difference between SegWit and native SegWit. Let's scroll down a little bit first. So I want to point out that the first kind of address type, even though we're talking about SegWit and native SegWit, the first kind of address type was legacy. And you'll know that you're in a legacy address because the address starts with a one. We can see in this screenshot here, Bittrex, for example, their addresses are legacy addresses that still start with a one. Then we've got SegWit addresses that start with a three and the newest type, native SegWit, that start with a BC1. So let's look at this high level overview from Ledger on the difference between them. So after legacy was out of the way, SegWit came which reduced the transaction's data size and allowed for faster transactions, better scalability, and decreased fees. After SegWit, native SegWit came along. It enhanced this even further and included even lower fees, so faster transactions and even lower fees than SegWit. Here's the important thing, however. Not all exchanges and wallet providers support sending Bitcoin to native SegWit addresses yet. They should all support to SegWit, though. So this is what you need to be careful. Now, Ledger can do transactions between all three, but you need to see which one that your exchange supports. For example, if we take a look at this screenshot again from Bittrex, this is now when you're trying to withdraw funds to your Ledger. The way they explain it here is a little bit confusing because even though they call it SegWit, we know that they're clearly talking about native SegWit addresses because of the fact that it has a BC1 prefix that they're talking about. So what they're trying to say here, even though it's a bit confusing, is to make sure you're sending to a SegWit address and not a native SegWit address. And that brings me to my next point about always, always, always when doing cryptocurrency transactions, make sure that you always send a test transaction first. Get whatever is the smallest denomination of Bitcoin that your exchange will allow you to send and try sending just that amount and see if it goes through as you expected. Okay, obviously before you even do that, you should check to see any warnings like this from your exchange to let you know what they do and do not support in terms of wallet destinations from the wallets that they host. But always, do a test transaction first, and then after that, once it's gone through as you would expect, then send the rest of your balance. Now, if your exchange supports all wallet types, then you would obviously want to try and use native SegWit, right? This is going to be the fastest one, and it has the lowest fees. If not, then SegWit is what you can go with. So hopefully that helps answer the difference between them and which one you should use. If you'd like a little bit more of a deep dive, there's a great article on this by eMoney Fellows. Um, we'll, uh, here's the URL, we'll also post this in the description below, but they go into much more detail about the actual blocks and how they're constructed, their size, the difference between them for the different transaction types and different kinds of addresses. So if you'd like, we suggest you take a look at that. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you appreciate the work that we do here on the channel, even though this was a Bitcoin video and we primarily focus on Cardano, please consider delegating to our Aspen stake pool, which we'll link below. We'll see you next time. Keep the great questions coming.